Hi folks, so let's talk about Unix file permissions. So in this video I'm going to describe how Unix security works, uh, how the file system works and file permissions work, and I'm going to demo a number of the commands and things on a Linux system that you use to do the standard file permission stuff. Um, so let's kind of jump in, um, kind of starting by describing how Unix security was designed. So Unix has been around for a while now, so you know, really starting to get used a lot in the 70s. And the way that computer systems worked at the time is mostly you'd have like this mainframe server that was um, in place. And then you have multiple dumb terminals, which is just like a keyboard and mouse that different users can sit down to and log into the system and use. And so you had multiple users using at the same server at the same time. Um, you know, funnily enough, after that we moved to, you know, the era of PCs where we had our own computers where we do our own processing on them. But we've kind of come full circle now, so we're starting to use more and more um, things that are in the cloud and external to us. Um, but the original security model for Unix is this idea of having lots of users with the same computer and we're protecting the system from the users and the users from each other. So each user on the system basically have their own files and they get to choose what they do with them. So that's referred to as an identity-based access controls and which is a kind of discretionary access control, which I'll talk about in another video uh, on the topic of access control models. But basically the idea is you've got file permissions and that provides the access control. So you've got permissions that are set on different files. So on a computer, the file system is the thing that describes the structure of how you store the information on the disk. And so on a hard drive or, you know, on a, on a, on a disk drive, you have files and you've got directories. Um, and for the, for the Windows people out there, that's a folder, which I guess you should have picked up by, by now, because I'm sure that I've seen, they'd saying directories the whole time. But if you come from the Windows world, you might think of it as a folder, but so you've got folders or directories, and with those, within those you've got files. Uh, funnily enough, a directory on the Linux system is literally just another file um, that lists inodes, but we'll come to that in a second. Um, and so you've got metadata that's attached to um, each of those. So metadata is just like information about information, so like information about some data. So or data. Um, there's my Australian accent for you, but you have um, on a, you've got a file and that file has some metadata attached to it, which includes the security information like any ACLs on a Linux system or any Unix file permissions, so on, on any other Unix system. And the, an operating system will support a few different file systems. So for example, on Linux, you've got different drivers so that you can plug in all kinds of different hard drives with different file formats on them. Um, and there's like a standard API that you use to talk to the operating system. But in the background, the operating system needs to store that security information in the file system. And so sometimes they're not always compatible so that if you have some file system, so for example, a Windows file system, might not be able to store all the same kind of like Linux, um, like extended ACLs and stuff into that file system. Uh, but there might be a way that it can store the um, like standard um, permissions. So the way that it works on, on Unix, you've got a file permission and every file has what's known as an inode. Um, and that inode gets stored on disk. It doesn't have a name, so it's just a, a number that represents the file. So where the file was actually stored on disk, there's this metadata that's that is the inode, and it has this number. So in just like a num, just an integer. So it might be one thousand and five, and that represents that file. And in that inode, it also describes some information about the file, like where the file is located on the disk. Um, so you know, if you wanted to seek that file on the disk, this is where it is the type of file it is. Um, so for example, is it a is it a directory or is it a like a standard um, like um, file um, 
like a character block file with, with characters in it. Um, what's the size of the file? When was it last modified? Um, when were the access, um, you know, when was it last accessed and all that sort of stuff. Um, but critically, you also have the file's owner, the UID, and the group, the GID, they're stored in the inode. Uh, and the file permission bits, which is how Unix uh, defines the standard file permissions. So everything on Unix is a file, and, and that includes directories. So a directory is just a special kind of file, and inside that file there's a list of names um, that, ref that, um, that are inside that directory, and there are inode numbers. So for example, I could have a directory anywhere, and in that directory it says inode 1000 and you know, whatever number I said last time that file appears in this directory and it has this name. So that means the name of the file isn't actually stored with the file itself. Um, in fact, the file itself is stored on disk somewhere and there's an inode that describes information about the file, but the name actually doesn't appear any of those places. The name appears in the directory. Um, and, and actually on, on Linux, you can name a file with all kinds of special characters which um, it does have security implications because if you're not careful with how you process files, you might accidentally send the file name through to bash and cause strange things to happen because you can actually include a, um, a file with an asterisk in it, for example, which if you send to bash in the wrong way um, can end up being interpreted as a wildcard. So, you know, if users are uploading files to your file, uh, to your website, for example, and that website runs a bash command that processes that file. You need to be really careful because if they upload a file that has an asterisk in its name and you if you careless with the way that you process that file name, you might end up with um, you know them being able to run commands or whatever uh, on your server. So you know you need to be careful. But yeah, so that so on Linux you've got the the names. Um, are stored in, in the file. And, and actually, it's interesting because how many names can an inode have is, is maybe, maybe you've not thought about it, but on a Linux system, you can actually have multiple files, file names for the same file. So, um, and we do that by linking. So you can have a hard link, which is where you've got a file that has more than one path. And if you delete a file, uh, it just removes the name from the directory and it, it, it decrements the inode counter. So in the inode, it keeps track of how many times the inode appears within the file system. And you can have the name, that same file appear in multiple places. And if you delete the file, it goes away and, and it keeps track of how many times it's appeared. And if you delete them all, then the counter goes all the way to zero and then it's deleted the inode gets deleted. And typically you'd have the data would still sit on the disk until you actually overwrite it. Um, but you know that if you're doing, if you're studying forensics. So Unix um, uses an abbreviated form of access control list. So rather than listing like every subject and what they can do um, to the file. So for example, in, in, a, in a full ACL for uh, a file, you might have like Oh, Joe's allowed to read the file. Frank's allowed to read, write the file. Neve's allowed to read the file. But actually, on Unix, the way it's defined is in terms of just the owner. So who owns the file? What are they allowed to do? The group. So each file is also like owned by a group. And um, what they're allowed to do, and what everyone else on the system is allowed to do. So it means that there's there's a lot less flexibility compared to like on a Windows ACL where they you just define you can define all the different users and what each user is allowed to do differently. On Unix, uh, it, it simplifies the access rules down to those three sets of rules for every, each file. Um, that's actually worked out really well for years and years. You know you you can you can do more than you suspect because you can create groups of users and things like that. So it's actually quite flexible actually in terms of what you can do with it. Um, but you know in a 
separate uh, thing next in two weeks time I think we'll come back to extended access control this in Linux so Linux you can do the full ACLs but the in, unless you specifically set an ACL this is how it works on on Unix including Linux systems um, is that the rules are summarized this way so here's an example and let's just switch to a VM because it's more interesting so if I um, I'm just in a temporary directory if I um, create a new file uh, called file and I'll just give it some um, um, just put some 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 information in that file um, what I've done is just to some just to explain what the command cat just like repeats back to you so if you type cat in and type something in it just like says it back to you and so um, you can end cat by pressing control D which is like sending the end of the file to it and I've just done that but then also redirected the output when it's repeating it back to a file. It's just a quick and easy way of saving some information to a file without needing to like open up an editor. So so we've got file, we've put some contents in it. Um, if we look at file, um, so ls lists the, uh, is like um, actually ls is named after an old multics um, command um, so back in the day because they weren't files there were segments and so that list segment or whatever but so, but anyway ls stands for list or like it's equivalent to in Windows the dir like list of directories so you can see what's there and the minus la uh, minus l is like a long listing so it includes all that information and not just the file itself and the a just shows hidden files this is not there's no hidden file here so getting rid of that won't change the output but if I get rid of the l uh, it just gives me the file name. So we have the long listing, um, and I can see here the file permissions. This, <clears throat> or in fact that part there, is the um, that is the Unix file permissions here. So this is saying that the person who owns the file, which is Shade, that's my user, is allowed to read and write it, uh, but not execute it. There's a dash there instead of the X character the group that it belongs to and it belongs to the shade group which I'm the only member of on so on a lot of Linux systems there's by default there'll be a group that's named after each user so each user gets their own group that is just just them so it's just kind of like just to make sure people don't accidentally share with people that they don't expect to um, but on other Unix on other Unix systems or Linux systems there everyone will be a member of like a users group um, which everyone's a member of by default, but anyway, you can add extra groups and add users to groups. Um, and then there's everyone else on the system, and everyone else just gets to read it. So that's important um, that when you create a file, uh, it's common that the permissions are such that everyone can read the file, but they can't write it. So every other person who shares this computer with me can see the files there, they can um, they can read even the contents of my files, but they can't um, edit the file. So the um, okay. So all right. So there's also on this line there's information about hard links. So there's the number one which um, includes, uh, so here, this number is actually the number of files, the number of times that this inode appears in the file system. Um, and also it's got the last modified time displayed. Um, and I guess a question to consider is like, you know, this, this time that's displayed in the output here is the last time that this file was, was modified by someone. Um, and I can, if I touch the file, it just updates that. Um, oh no, actually, that will add a, uh, update the access time. Um, so, uh, but there, yeah, there's also the access time that's, that's associated with the file. And let's just double check that. So you can um, actually ask ls to show access times instead of modified times. Um, so it's also got the size on the disk, 
So that is this number. So you can actually, um, if you add dash H to to it, um, it changes to human readable outputs generally. Um, and so oh yeah, so you can get the access time with a minus u and that I know change time with a minus c. So if we add here to get a u, then that time you can see is slightly different because that's the last time that that's when I touched the file to, to up, update the, the um, access time. And if we do the U, the C, sorry, then we'll get the inode update time. So that's the last time when um, the inode was updated. And that includes changing file permissions. Um, but the touch commands also updated the inode. So that's why it's changed. So all of that information is just stored on the disk somewhere. And so someone who has a someone who's a root user, for example, can actually just modify these times. So you know you can't be 100% confident that they're not lying to you if your system's been compromised. If it hasn't, then then it should, you should be safe to to believe it. So the read write execute mean obvious things. So read is that if it's on a regular file, it means they can read it. Write means they can change it. Execute means they can um, actually start the program up. So they can actually start. If it's a, an executable file, they can run it and it will launch, or if it's a script. So if it, if it, how it starts with a hash bang, so a um, hash and then an exclamation mark, and followed by the name of the interpreter, like bin slash bash, then it will use that interpreter to run the script. Um, or if it's a, like a program, it will run the program. If it's, and you can only do that if it, you have execute permission on the file. But if the file is a directory, if the um, if if it's a directory that has those permissions, they mean slightly different things. So read permission gives you the ability to see what files are in the directory. The write permission allows you to add names, um, like add files to the directory, or rename files in the directory, or delete files from the directory. And execute permission lets you stat the file the the file or the directory which means that you can see what's in it, essentially. So that means you can, if you've got execute permission on a directory, you can see like the file owners and the sizes. You can change directory into, the, into, like, into that directory, and you can access the files within. So typically, you need the execute permission on all of the, um, if you've got a file that you want to share with someone, they need to have stat permission on each of the directories that lead to that directory that has the file in it, or they can't like get down to the file that they're trying to access. Um, and so you you know it's possible to set it up so that they can like kind of like navigate to or run access a file that's sitting within a few directories. But if you want to do that, you need to set them so they've got stat permission on each of those directories. And um, you know if you wanted to let them see what files are in there, you would add read and if you want them to be able to write to the to what, what files are in the directory, then you would have uh, the write permission. So if you want to change the permissions on a file, um, then you can do that um, a couple of different ways. So before we actually change the files, let's have a, just have a quick look at the files that are there. So I've got, I'm logged in with two different users, uh, and I've just put this file into the temp directory. So you can see here that I have read write, everyone else has read. So if I switch users, to this other user. Oops. And try and I so I've got permission to access that same file as a different user and I've just put it in the temporary directory so so I'm, which is a place that everyone can can access. Um, so, so just so we don't have to think about the permissions of the home directories. Um, so 
If I wanted to edit that file though, now you can see that it's read only. So this user doesn't have permission to actually um, write to the file. If I wanted to add the permission to write to, write to the file, then um, then I can do that a couple of ways. So. So if we stat the file, we can see here, this is the file permissions. And then there's a way that you can describe those file permissions, which is using like octal notation. So basically a number that represents these permissions. And the way that you calculate this, so if you know how to, to use the numbers, it's a very quick way. Uh, and it's, it's actually like a lot, it's quite easy when, when you understand how it works to set file permissions. So the six, four, so the zero has a special meaning, uh, which we'll come to, I think, next week. Um, so we'll come back, we'll ignore that for now. There's a three digit number here, so three octals, so up to seven, so seven to zero, um, that represent these permissions. And there's one of these numbers represents this part. One of these numbers represents the next one, so the groups, and then the other one represents everyone else. So if we uh, want to set the file permissions, we can uh, do chmod, uh, which is change um, mode, I guess, so which changes the file permissions. Uh, we can set them to be exactly how they are now, just to see that it doesn't change. Um, and now We can see here, you know, we have the same file permissions we had. If we change this um, to say this, 604, and we look at that again, we'll see that we've basically zeroed out the um, permissions of the group. So the shade group. Don't get any extra from, um, permissions to access the file. So the way that we calculate it is fairly straightforward. It's just read, write, execute, and we just read is a four, execute is a two, uh, write is a two, and execute is a one, you just add the numbers together. So if you wanted read, write, and execute, you add four and two and one, which gives you seven. Uh, so if you want to give all the permissions, we can say, for example, seven, seven, seven. Uh, and now when we look at those permissions, we can say, well, we've given everyone read, write, and execute permission. If we wanted ourselves to have read, and ex read, write, and execute, and everyone else to have nothing, so you just start with some, like something simple, then we can just do seven, zero, zero, so everything, nothing, nothing. And if you want something in between, then you just have to add those numbers together. So it's four, two, and one, you just add those, add those numbers together. So if you just wanted to give everyone read, uh, myself everything and everyone else read permission then we just give everyone else four so if we wanted to um, give everyone else read write but not execute uh, permission for some reason then what we would do is do so read and write is four and two so we add four and two which gives us six so we do, um, so 766 will give us read and write. If you didn't want read and write, but instead wanted read and execute, um, but not to change it, so you want them to be able to read the file and execute it, so for example, a script that you want other people to run, um, then in, instead, you might want to pause the video and answer the question for yourself. What would you uh, put if you wanted to allow other people to read and execute but not write? So you can pause the video here, see if you get the right answer. So uh, remember, it's four, two, and one. So if we if we wanted just the first and the last of those, then we just want to add four and one. So it's five. So did you get it right? Um, so. Yeah, so that's how that that's how the octals work in terms of defining um, file permissions. So 
you can also uh, set relative changes. So you can also use, um, uh, so you could say you, which actually stands for the user that owns the file. So that's like the owner. So you um, minus right. And then it keeps everything the same, but it just removes that one thing. So now if we look, we've just taken away our write permission. Um, you can also do, um, so group, uh, so plus write. Um, we'll basically give the group the permission. You can do um, other plus write. It's a, a weird way to set permissions, giving ourselves less than everyone else, but uh, you know, that's how that works. Um, or you can use, without without saying who it's for, you could just say, actually, just take away right from the file. Um, that's an interesting error message. New permissions are the, it's not going to set. Okay, I'm not sure why. It's at least it's warned us that uh, it's not done what you'd expect. Um, But yeah, so you can, there's a few different ways that you can see there that you can modify the file permissions. Um, and that's how you use Chmod essentially. So the umask, if you're wondering why I, when I created a file, the other user could access it. There's, there's actually, there's multiple things in play that um, affect the file permissions on the new file that was created. The main one is in this in this scenario the thing that's defined it is the U mask. So if we look at the U mask, the U mask is set as uh, again. Let's ignore the first zero. We've got zero two two, and essentially what it's doing is it's subtractive. So it, it is um, taking away those bits of file permissions away from uh, like the standard. So, um, so it's stripping permissions from the default 666 for files or 777 for executables. Um, so it's doing a logical not. So a umask of zero will result in files having permissions of 666. So if we set umask and we can do it, uh, we can just um, we can just do uh, I'll just check that that's changed our umask. So now if we create a new file and then have a look at it, the permissions, we can see that um, the, the default is to be permissive and to let everyone to do 666, which is read and write, read and write, read and write. Um, The, um, we can do the same thing for um, make directory. So we can see um, this directory that we just created here has all the permissions uh, read, write, and execute. So um, So yeah, so tra so it, so so this is for um, for files that are normal files or executables, but also um, so for directories, the standard is to give everything unless we strip something away. So we set the U mask to um, again. We'll try and keep it kind of simple. If I set it to seven seven seven, what do you think the um, new files permissions are going to be? If I um, Create a new file by touching the file. Um, so, what do you think that's going to be? Um, the file that was created, no one has any permission to do anything with it. So, and, and you know, I, because I own it, I can change the permissions again. But without changing anything, I can't even like look at that file. Um, I don't even have permission as the owner of the file to look at it because I've set the permissions to that. 
Um, again, I could change it with Shimod, but if I change the U mask to 700, um, now when I create new files, Um, that is, uh, oh, actually I did that the wrong way around. So I stripped out my own permissions and gave everyone else permissions. I didn't do that. That's not really what I was intending to do, to be honest. Um, so if I want to um, basically um, have a bit more privacy on, my, on a system that's shared with other users, I could set my UMask to 077. And now when I create new files, um, you'll see that they are, um, the other users on the system don't have any permission to read those files. And um, obviously when you are um, dealing with home directories and things, you need to think about what the permissions are on your home directory. So if we look at um, the home directory for this user, um, you can see, oh, and actually, um, oh, this is a case where I want to include the list, the LA, so the dash A in the command as well, because now it's going to share, the, show the hidden files, which on a Linux system is just any file that starts with a dot, um, like a period, but one period represents the current directory and two periods is the parent of the current directory. But you can see here, so the current directory is set in a way on this system so that other users in the system can't see or access the files in my home directory. That's not always the case. So depending on um, the way you've set your system up, some Linux systems don't have that as the default. And you, if, you, if you didn't want other people to see what files you had in your home directory, you need to set that yourself. Um, and so that's something to be aware of. But also if you're trying to share a file with some other user, you need to think about the file permissions between like to, for them to get at the file that's sitting in a bunch of directories, can they actually start each of the directories leading to that file? Um, <clears throat> and so that's that's important to think about. So so you mask of zero two two, which is the default on um, most Linux systems, actually results in permissions of read write read read, so everyone can read the files. So obviously. That is um, something to think about so that if you are on a shared Linux system to, um, you know, if you don't want that to be the case, you can set your UMask. The variable, the, the environment variable that I've been setting here, the UMask variable, it won't persist. So if I restart, if I log out and log back in again, that won't stay there. So if you want to make that permanent, you need to put it somewhere where it gets set as the computer's booting or as you log in, and there's a bunch of different ways to do that, which Google will tell you about. You can put it in bashrc or dot profile, or a bunch of other places, but basically um, you need to set that if you if you care about it. All right, so that is a, uh, I was gonna say whirlwind, but that is a half an hour um, detailed um, demo of how file permissions work on Linux and Unix systems. I hope that was helpful, and now you understand all about file permissions on Unix. And uh, later on, we'll visit some more advanced uh, features.